So welcome back to the channel everybody. If you haven't done so yet, go back and check out parts one to four of my NES collection. Uh, as a reminder, this is just a way for me to sort of do a visual record keeping and that way I can make an official spreadsheet and sort of eliminate me from buying doubles and, and sort of forgetting what I have in my collection. So without further ado, part five of the NES collection. We're gonna start off with uh, a fan favorite. This is a Sunsoft's Spy Hunter. It's a vertical scrolling driving game uh, where you're the driver of a spy vehicle and it's a top-down perspective and basically uh, you're driving down uh, the highway going up and you're just trying to eliminate cars off the screen. Um, you got a point system whereby as you're traveling the points go up, you eliminate bad vehicles you get points, um, and if you eliminate good vehicles, uh, your point system sort of pauses temporarily for a little bit. And there's also, if I recall correctly, an um, arcade version of this as well. Um, and I remember the arcade steering wheel sort of being like this futuristic, uh, sort of like a Knight Rider style steering wheel. So that is Spy Hunter. Next is a game that probably a lot of people played. Uh, definitely one of the first early ones that I've played for the NES system. Excite Bite. Um, it's a side scrolling. You're on your dirt bike. And you can compete with other players. Go against the CPU. Um, basically just trying to get a best record. Come in first, second or third for the track. I think at some point you have to come in first, otherwise the game stops, but um, fun game. Uh, you can also design your own track. Uh, when you're when you're driving, I remember like the frustrating part was um, you could do like a turbo mode for your bike, but you can only get to a certain point where before this like screeching alarm would go off and that would be like the alarm for your bike overheating. And it would then, um, you'd have to drive down like the regular speed mode until your bike cooled down enough and then you could gun it again and push it up to uh push it to the limit okay so next up is a bandai game um i think i remember enjoying the movie when i saw it in the theater just because of how different it was uh this is bandai's dick tracy so this came out in 1990 uh, basically, the objective is to solve several mysteries without accusing the wrong person or shooting too many, um, like, civilians. Um, it starts off, like, with a top-down perspective, uh, and you're driving uh, Dick Tracy's vehicle through the city. You're avoiding sharpshooters. Um, and then when you get to the right location, you get out. Or if you get to the right location, then, and when you get out, there's, like, a clue there that helps you... Uh, progress and solve and try and help you solve the mystery that you're trying to do the game's not the best super frustrating at some points especially the driving um konami game track and field what's there to be said about that one oddly enough though i don't remember playing track and field when it was out i actually skipped it and went right to track and field too uh this is the one that i'm familiar with more than the uh, track and field game and again it's the same thing that you can see in the the picture of the screen there you know the events the the standard events you would have like in a track and field meet and fun. it was sort of fun um i don't remember there being arm wrestling but i remember i enjoyed the archery uh the diving was always sort of fun uh, there was karate, there was skeet shooting, which was fun. Um, not bad. Pretty fun games for uh, Konami. Okay, so next is a racing game and based upon a movie. This is Days of Thunder. So obviously, as I mentioned, it's a racing simulation game loosely based on the 1990 Days of Thunder movie. Um, it uses uh, elements from the movie, um, and basically the whole premise is to, uh, well, you're competing in NASCAR races, and if you, if you 
finish high enough, then that allows you to progress on to further races. And damage is, was sort of done like, um, like the view is from inside the driver's seat and damage was done like uh, sort of like the hard driving arcade style of game whereby like your screen would get like a jagged crack in there if you started to get damage or the windshield will get like a crack in it and just little things like that uh not a great game but then again days of thunder really wasn't that great of a movie even though right when it came out i think a lot of people liked it Okay, so next is a game from Romstar, and it is Twin Eagle. So it's a shoot 'em up game. Um, you can play two players with it. Um, there's a continue feature in the game, and uh, basically your mission is to avenge, uh, if I recall, um, uh, avenge your brother's death. So, you know, standard, we've seen the NES have a bunch of them, and I've talked about them in the previous uh, NES sections. It's top-down helicopter shooter. Uh, vertical, obviously, uh, scrolling. I don't know, fun game. Fun game. I tend to, I tend to like the helicopter uh, vertical scrollers a lot better than a lot of other shooters. Next is uh, a game whereby the gentleman programmer likes to have his name on the title. Uh, this is Gary Kitchen's Battle Tank. And it is exactly what the title is. You're inside of a tank. Um, you can control. Uh, you can switch yourself to various positions in the tank, like driver, gunner, commander kind of thing. And the whole idea is you're just, it's very blocky and you're just traveling uh, inside the tank, trying to eliminate enemies. Milton Bradley game. And at some point I might sort of do like a Milton Bradley uh, game collection for the NES. Sort of like a, a subset for it. But this is Jordan versus Bird one-on-one. -on -one. And it is a bad game. Or Jordan or your bird going you can do one-on-ones against one another I think there's a couple different options the style of gameplay uh, but it is very cumbersome and not enjoyable at all another Milton Bradley game it's got a really nice label on it which probably means it hasn't been played and it's probably not very good world games And yeah, similar to style, like, uh, you know, depending on where you go in the world, they've got their own specific style of uh, events that you can do, you know, obviously as it sort of depicts in the title. Okay, next is a game that came out in 1989. Uh, this is Gyrus. Gyrus? Gyrus? I say Gyrus. So it's a fixed shooter game. Um, picture um, uh, picture Galaga. It's sort of like a, a it's like a tube shooter, whereby your ship is faced into the screen and you can move like sort of in, in a implicit style of gameplay. Um, you got the stars moving to give the impression of your movement and uh, yeah. So if you like Galaga, you'd probably enjoy uh, Gyrus. Okay, next is a game that I'll probably never play just due to the fact that I don't have a TV that will work for it, but Barker Bill's Trick Shooting. This is a light gun game. There's uh, four events in it. There's uh, balloons, uh, flying saucers, window panes, and then the fourth one uh, sort of involved like a variation of the first three plus an additional two different types of games. So if you have the light gun and you got it yourself a CRT, uh, TV capable of uh, like on usage. This could be fun. Otherwise, um, this is just taking up space on my shelf. All right, next is a game. Uh, it can be kind of fun, I guess, if you're into that. This is Sofal's Wall Street Kid. So basically, you just need to prove yourself to be like a good stock stockbroker. So you get like five hundred thousand dollars in seed money, 
and you can get the goal of the game is to get that two million dollars uh you got like a girlfriend you need to spoil um you obviously you're investing in you know the stock market um and if you you start to doing good it gives you like a uh, little bonus features like you get to go shopping and stuff like that so i don't know if you're into those kind of thinking games i guess it might be pretty good all right next is a game that um was definitely a rental for me and i remember being extremely disappointed by it taboo the sixth sense I think, if I recall correctly, this is the only NES game that has two warnings on it. Uh, one, you have to be 14 years of age or older to play it. And two, it's only meant to be an entertainment game. Sort of like a party game, right? And it's as the title says. Well, it doesn't say in there, but... Uh, well, those your personalized lucky numbers revealed. So it's a tarot card. I say tarot, but tarot card tarot card uh style of gameplay you know you get to put like your name your age and all this nonsense in there and then basically have your your fortune read to you so fisher price perfect fit enough said about that it's a fun game i like doing this one this is a black bass fishing game you go fishing in it All right, another uh, Milton Bradley game. And uh, I think this may have been an arcade one. I can't recall correctly, but I th think it was. Uh, this is uh, Cabal. So what this is, is um, you're one of two command. You can play two players, but normally if you're just playing one player, you're a commando. The perspective is uh, you're looking at the back of your guy as he's on the lower part of the screen and he's just trying to there's a crosshair cursor on the screen that you use to eliminate the guys there's four stages i want to say four to five stages uh and the goal is just to get through the stages I don't know. what do you want me to say bandai's golf at uh where's this one at challenge pebble beach I always used to like these golf games. Um, I got more into them through the uh, PC versions, right? You know, you got, uh, there's Pebble Beach and all these other ones. I should do, uh, I got a couple, bunch of them from my uh, big box PC collection. Anyway, golf game. And while we're still on baseball, let's pull up this one here and move it forward a little bit. This is Bandai's Legends of the Diamond, the baseball, the baseball championship game. Obviously, as per said with the title, there's obviously the famous legends of baseball in the past that you can play as. Uh, there's about 30 of them. I'm not sure how far... Like, obviously, you can go back to, like, Babe Ruth and stuff, but I'm not sure how far forward into the future or up to present day that you get to. I know, like, uh, you can play, like, Carlton Fisk and all those guys, but uh, aside from that, um, fun game. The graphics aren't the best. I think it's just more for the nostalgia of playing as uh, Legends of the Past, right? Okay, next is another game from Konami. This is Russian Attack. Now, this this was uh, also based on an arcade version. And basically, uh, you can play two co-op, two-player co-op if you want to. It's a side-scrolling game, and you're supposed to um, destroy a secret weapon being, being developed in the enemy's uh, headquarters. Um, as far as I know, this is pretty similar to the arcade version. Same sort of style of weapons, like flamethrower... Rocket launcher, grenades, all that stuff. Okay, next is a game that's actually developed by Rare. And it is Snake, Rattle, and Roll. It's a platform game. And basically the idea is to navigate uh, through obstacles or around obstacles in each level. Uh, you're eating items to get to a certain uh, size, uh, which will allow you to weigh in sort of like 
and then that allows you to progress on to the next level. Next game is one that I remember initially playing on my uncle's Commodore 64. And this is Load Runner. It's been a while, but if I remember correctly, it's like a single screen um, with multi levels on it. And at least for the version I'm familiar with, your, your, your little small character on the screen. The idea is to run around picking up treasures on certain parts uh, of the level while avoiding the enemies. Yep. Uh, this is a combo cart, though both of these, I know you can get, uh, well, I don't get the first one individually. I don't, I haven't come across the second one, but this is Super Spike V-Ball and Nintendo World Cup. Obviously, it's a volleyball game and soccer game combo. Um, I do have the Super Spike V-Ball individual, but I, like I said, I never came across this Nintendo World Cup one. I enjoyed the, the Super Spike. Um, sort of like a... I always like pictured it as sort of like a River City Ransom style of uh, graphics for your guys, and you're just playing uh, V-Ball game I'm not too familiar with. I know the name Stealth ATF. And um, yeah, you're basically flying a stealth bomber on, on missions. Uh, I don't know what else to say about that one. All right, next is Capcom's Section Z. In this game, you're a space ranger uh, moving through an enemy space station, which consists of like uh, 26... Well, 26 alphabetical levels, thus the name Section Z, because you're supposed to go from Section A to Section Z. It's kind of neat because it's sort of like the space style of it. Um, you know, you do get to hover around and sort of fly instead of just sort of running. All right, next is a game. If you're familiar with MTV or remember it, you probably might remember this, but this is uh, MTV Remote Control. It's a TV game show. And basically, yeah, you're just answering like sort of like trivia questions on there. If you get it wrong, you, got the, you can get like shocked. You can be distracted while you're answering questions. Like you get popcorn thrown at you and stuff like that. Um, not the best, not very good graphics, really. It's you against two other computer uh, components, uh, contestants, and uh, yeah, is what it is. Another volleyball game, Kings of the Beach. I prefer uh, Super Spike V-Ball over this one. Okay, next is a game from HAL, and this is Vegas Dream. Basically, your player in Vegas, you get like $700 that you start off with. Uh, there's four games, Kino, Blackjack, Roulette, and Slot Machines. And the idea is, obviously, you're supposed to uh, make it big in Vegas. And aside from playing those four different games, there's also like uh, uh, AI interaction with other computer characters, whereby like, you talk to them and then depending on how you treat them or whatever scenarios they might be in. Like if you show kindness, sometimes uh, a player who's down on his luck might sort of reward you uh, with some extra money or something like that. So interesting. I should have pulled this one out when I did the, um, actually there's two here. I should have pulled out when I did the bases loaded. Uh, this was definitely a rental back in the day. Uh, Cyber Stadium Series Base Wars. Interesting part about this one. This one's actually battery backup too, which is kind of cool. Um, interesting in the fact that you're not playing with real people. You are, a, I don't want to say like a cybernetic being, but you're basically like a robot, I guess. I don't think there's any, I think they're all robots. There's various versions though. Like you got ones on tanks. Um, you got ones that hover. You got ones here in the top that are like on wheels. And obviously based on those certain characteristics, they've got certain stats. Like the wheel guys are fast. 
Oh, and there's, there's ones that have two legs as well, so, which are just average. Um, I think, like, the hover guys can float or are hard throwers. Uh, the tank guys are, like, uh, good hitters. They've got more strength. Um, and then there'll be parts where, like, it shows there. Um, I don't believe there's, like, there were some parts where it was, like, definitive outs, but if it was too close to call you get into a one-on-one -on -one sort of uh, combat style to figure out the dispute. Um, sort of like um, Blaze of Steel, the screen would switch and then be like you two battling it out and whoever wins, I think you can get like called safe then. And then during the game or after the game with your team, you get to repair your players, uh, swap them out if you want to switch things up. But here's the game with just regular people. Um, MLB baseball. It's fine. Nothing spectacular. Not as great as you would think it would be considering it's got the MLB license on there. Um, I prefer the bases loaded. And was there another one? Uh, nope. But we do have NES play action football. And you get to play football in it. It's okay. It's okay. It's no... Um, it's no Tecmo Bowl, let me tell you. And you know what? I don't think... I don't remember talking about Tecmo Bowl. I can't recall if I have that in the collection. Next is a game that is not as good as the movie, but it's still pretty decent. It's actually not bad. Uh, Capcom's Commando. So in this game, you play as a character called Super Joe... So you get dropped off in a jungle by a helicopter and you have to fight your way out. It's a one player game um, and you're fending off, uh, obviously, uh, it's top down, uh, vertically scrolling uh, shooter game. So you're the commando guy. Um, sort of like picture Akari Warriors, that sort of style of gameplay. Um, it's a fun game. The graphics are nice. Very similar to like Akari, which I, I, I enjoy. Um, the only downfall is um, I remember I didn't like the grenades because no matter what direction your character was facing, the grenades only shot directly up the screen. I uh, don't have to say anything about this game, but it's actually fun. Monopoly. I don't know what it is with these... Um, with these uh, board games that have been translated to go onto consoles. I enjoy them, I think they're fun. Um, I do enjoy physical board games better, but something about not having to clean up after and you can just power it off uh, is pretty entertaining. Though the, uh, I find the computers like to cheat a lot in this. All right, next up are two stupid games. They're just completely fillers. Um, this is Sesame Street. One, two, three. Game one, Astro Grover. Game two, Ernie's Magic Shapes. I know you want it. The next is Sesame Street's ABC. Game one, Letter Go Round, and Ernie's Big Splash is game two. So here are... Both of them together. Like I said, filler titles. Okay, final two games. Uh, next one is, I like to say MC Kids, but it's really Mick Kids. And yeah, basically in this game, you are two characters, uh, Mac and Mick, I think. Mac and Mick. And you've been transported to uh, uh, a magical McDonald land, I guess. Uh, Ronald McDonald's like lost his bag or something. And you have to go, f his magical bag, and you have to go find it and bring it back. Uh, again, one of those uh, promotional ones like uh, Sneak King or stuff like that. Like they're, uh, the Pepsi guy game. And finally, for part five... This is a fun game. I like it. Like my label seems to be a little, it's showing age, which is a little unfortunate. But uh, 
I do like good wrestling games. Uh, WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge. This is one where you get to be one of six different characters. And um, yeah, have some fun wrestling. So that's it, guys. Part five of the NES collection. Stay tuned. There's going to be one more part. I hope. Hopefully it doesn't go past that. Um, but leave me a comment below. Tell me your thought about these uh, X amount of titles and whether or not I should uh, try one if I haven't tried it, as well as maybe your opinions on one that I said wasn't good but you think is. And we'll catch you guys again for another video very soon.